So this is the diversity and inclusion working group. I do appreciate anyone with the willingness to volunteer to keep track of the minutes. Um, nobody else volunteered to coordinate this meeting after the last one. So I am keen to see if there's anyone that is willing to coordinate the meeting after this one. Um, I can do that. Is that Matt Snell? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Matt. Um, how I'm feeling today. Matt Snell, I want to know the answer to your question. What was this? I missed the question. Oh, what it's is it? Partner? Oh, no. Uh, what kind of superhero has the most home runs? Uh, oh, is that this is the riddle? Or like a joke? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's Batman. Yes. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Thanks, Matt. All right. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's that's great. Um, so we do have a one action item that's been added and then uh, we should probably review uh, the metrics that we have uh, set, set for release. Um, But let's start with, I don't know the topic for the reply to Angela, Angela Brown from LF events um, to our recommendation on the disability question on the registration forms. Um, is this a quote of the, I don't know who put this there. Is this a quote of what her response was? Yes, that is copied from her email. Okay, and okay. Thank you to, Thank you to you and the CAS Diversity and Inclusion Working Group members for your efforts here, which are much appreciated. We will put all your recommendations in place and the latter two will be reflected on all future registration forms. That's fantastic. Um, if somebody could copy what those uh, two questions that'll be included in all the registration forms are, when you have a chance, I think that will be helpful. I, I don't know um myself i can copy it up from our previous meeting minutes all right thank you so this th that sounds like really fantastic news that that we actually um that that you know the elf is um doing that work and that's that's fantastic um for the existing Poll requests. Is it? Let me ask before I start. Are there topics other than sort of the business of reviewing poll requests and other types of things that we want to address during this meeting today? It's been a it's been a couple of weeks since we met, and if there if there are specific topics on folks' minds, I want to make sure those are reflected in the agenda before we get rolling. I think if I remember right, we can look at the uh, public chat channels metric again yeah. today, but that's the only thing I'm in my mind. Okay. And I know we worked on that last time as well. So um, are these the, um, yeah, these are the, one, are these the, okay, so we've got two under review. Are there, I'm just gonna open the spreadsheet real quick and see if there are others aside from those that we're tracking for in progress. We have, uh, so demographic diversity, um, listening, speaking. So there are some other metrics that we've listed as in progress. And of those, are there any that we intend to pursue the release of during the next uh, metrics release cycle, which um, I believe our metrics 
go under review at the end of January. They go under review once we flag them ready, but right. then yes, there is a public review one month uh, metric freeze where we don't right. add new metrics to the review and we focus on reviewing what we have. Yeah, so like for example, demographic diversity, listening and speaking, we do list as in progress, but we haven't started work on those yet. Um, and also, Code of conduct, these these three here under governance, um, we do list as in progress, um, and we haven't uh, started the template on those um, for discoverability and communication channels. The templates have been started, and I think I think those are on the list of ones to discuss today. Does somebody want to take the action item of at least getting? I guess question one is, is do we plan to work on these metrics for the next release or not? Or should we discuss that briefly? I think with the time given, if we can finish documentation, discoverability and communication channels by January, then we have four new metrics for this upcoming release, which is a good pace to be working in. Okay. So I'll leave those as they are. If anyone wants to create the templates, that's awesome, but I won't spend our meeting time on that. Returning to our agenda, um, we're working on these metrics and we have these metrics under review. So both of these, I, I think, required a good deal of discussion last time that we didn't include. So I might suggest that we begin a discussion about public chat channels um, and maybe review that metric and then maybe give that, give that 15 minutes, give or take, and then look again at document discoverability. What the folks think of that? Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Let's get started. OK, so um, there are accepted. So we've got ex uh, the changes from the last time accepted in a lot of comments. Uh, my first question here is, do we want to take a minute to read this metric um, and then before we edit it, or do we do want do we want to just initiate collective editing? Justin, I'll I'll throw that question to you as the as the head as the person who's leading the charge on this one. Yeah. So um, for as far as changes since the last time we talked about it, I was I integrated most of the feedback that we had from the last live editing. Mostly things got moved around or changing a few nitpicks, um, did find out that there actually is a uh, Gitter support in Percival. It's just oh. not documented, but there is actually a um, plugin already written for it that integrates with it. So that's that's a plus. Um, but uh, All of Augur's features are documented, he said in a complete lie. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I just wanted, just didn't get into the readme. I guess, but if you look at the code base, there's a there's a whole there's a whole integration with Gitter, so that is there. That's the only other I think major change since last time. Okay. I, I think this one is almost finished. Um, maybe just looking at any final um, final nitpicks or or suggestions. I know that the biggest <coughs> feedback that I've had so far is just maybe being more clear that we mean like the chat platform itself versus communication and moderation strategies, but sometimes that also influences the tool like i guess that would might be the detail to kind of keep in mind while going through this is just making sure that we're really clear that this is about picking a platform and not mm -hmm. how to inclusively moderate your community because i think that's a whole whole nother you know it's a topic worthy of discussion in all of its own okay so uh, that's all for me i think maybe just like a 10 or 15 minute pass just to do a um maybe one last review and then see where we want to take this next. Cause I'm not sure what else, um, maybe we can, you know, polish it up a little bit, but I think it's almost, I think it's almost done. Yeah. Uh, I, I think let's take, let's take that 10 minutes and collectively review it. Um, one, one question that we should ask ourselves at maybe after we've edited and reviewed it is as a general pattern, we haven't balanced um, the metric itself. And in general, I don't think we are. We are classifying tools 
that we want to draw trace data from as being open or not. I don't think that violates, in my opinion, I don't think that violates our general principle of having not not having values uh, assigned to the metrics inside the definition. However, um, we may want to discuss that after we spend the time time editing, because I'm sure that will come up in the review period. Um, and sure. as I learned in my last meeting, we actually typically don't record uh, during <laughs> the editing session. So if we're ready to start like reviewing and editing, I will uh, pause the recording and um, if, if that works for people. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Okay, so we've spent 10 minutes uh, or so um, reviewing and editing this document and making some changes. Justin, I think you had a comment. Um, I mean, I guess for me, uh, I'd just be wondering if anyone has specific feedback. I guess maybe the thing that we could talk about would just be the the name, because that's just kind of like the um, probably the, the most uh, <laughs> the most pressing thing, maybe just to make sure that we're clear on the name. But um, there's a couple of comments. I was wondering if anyone wanted to highlight or call out any of their their edits. Um, for the most part, I think I've accepted most of them, but um, not sure if anyone wants to like bring any up for discussion or or raise any group questions before maybe looking at another one. It seems as though I can't scroll up to a comment that appears to be above the document. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, yeah. So Don had asked a question about something about diversity and inclusion in the title, um, and you and Don had a conversation about it over the last few weeks, and uh, I had a few suggestions. Um, I, I do think Don's point is important be, in, in because there are other things like just gross activity, participants' messages that are of interest in other working groups. But I, I do think our interest in this is making some measurement of inclusivity uh, or transparency. And I, those are the two words I suggested only because um, well, there seem like obvious words to consider. Um, I'm unsure about the removal of public because I think, I guess it, so on the one hand, public I think is good, although we're not trying to make value judgments, but it's hard for us to measure or know about private chat channels. So if we just say chat channels, I'm not sure I'm not actually sure we can create a metric for chat channels that are not public. That's that's my only comment. My thinking here is that we used public only in three instances throughout the entire document. One of them was the title. Mm -hmm. And so it didn't seem to be reflected in the rest of the document. And then to your point, Sean, open source projects might not make all of their synchronous communication public where anyone can join. They might have some that are only for project members or community yeah. members, and they might still have access to the data and API and can apply these principles or metrics as well. Right. There. So as a project owner, I'm interested in the metrics, even though my channel is not public. And in fact, I mean, Augur has private chat channels um, that, that we use for like low level coordination that we would be interested in, in this metric for. So that, make, that makes sense. That makes a good deal of sense to me. But, me too. I like the idea of chat channel inclusivity. I think that's one I can, we can sit with that one for a week and then see if we, uh, we feel differently next week. <laughs> I mean, the other thing we can do is, I think that this we, this work has become mature. And one question I would throw to the group is, is the metric mature enough to put under review or is there more work? I think the one other thing that we need to discuss is under the, the listing of the platforms and what to do about that before we release it. But when I read through it, this seemed as though, it seemed to me as, as it's a, it seemed to me to be a very complete metric that review beyond the this working group, it, it may be time for that.
Yeah, I guess I guess the the summary that I was thinking of for the the platforms is um, I, I would agree. I don't think we have to list the poop emoji platforms here, <laughs> but I, I do think love uh, those. <laughs> I think what we could do instead is just list platforms that are currently supported in Grimoire, or maybe just link out to Percival, see Percival for supported platforms. Um, so that way we don't have to keep up that list if Percival adds or drops support for others. Um, so maybe we could just link out to that, just be like see Percival for information on supported platforms with Grimoire. I'd be okay with that and not um, listing specific platforms. I would say in addition to that, I'm interested in knowing whether or not the platform is open source, because if I'm looking at like as a project maintainer, I kind of want to know if I've like, I'm using Slack. I know it's not open. I don't, I did not have awareness of several of these open source chat channels that are available. And this is, so this is a place I could get that information and I don't know where else I would look for it. So I think, I think it's helpful to indicate whether it's open source or not. And I don't think it's a value judgment. I think it's a fact. So I guess I would advocate for indi some indication of whether or not the platform is, is open source in addition to its availability on, and I, I don't have any issue uh, listing its availability in Percival. Right now, Percival is in fact the only tool that incorporates um, these chats into their, their metrics. Um, but at some point in the future, I, I'm sure Augur will get there. So I understand the value of knowing whether a tool is open source or not. My concern with including the list in the metric is that this list becomes outdated. Slack was just bought by Salesforce. We don't know what's going to happen there. And I would like to keep this technology detail out of the metric. When you redesigned the metric template about a year ago, we removed a lot of the low level technical details to keep the metrics more inspirational and focused on what you could do with a metric like this without going in the detail on how you would actually implement it. So that's why I think it's too much information in a chaos metric. We can take this information, publish it on our blog, say, hey, this is one of the outcomes that we had in a working group and we think it's really valuable. And we can just write three sentences and publish it on our blog and archive it there. I, I think that's, that's, that's a good idea. I think if we make it available somewhere. Um... Okay, I can write a quick blog post about that. Okay, perfect. Um... I'm going to leave the crossouts in there now so that you don't lose the list. <laughs> um, and when I guess we could. I, guess copy I copied it, it out. We All can, right. We can accept that then. I do also see some benefit to linking that blog to the metric, if that's possible, just so that people can can have that awareness of the uh, of that list. I know it will change and that can happen in, in Git, but knowing what's open and not is really beneficial as well. I, I, I understand why you don't want it in the metric though. I, I, um, I like that idea as well. So maybe we had C chaos blog post on open source platform status here and we can we can leave that blank uh, and i like that idea i think because when i come to this metric that really is one of the this is that'll be a very important question for me as a, as a newcomer um i don't know that i put a i didn't put a great deal of thought into choosing slack i was using slack already um, and knowing these other options exist, I think is helpful. Um, and I think linking it in the metric is also helpful. Linking the blog post in the metric. Oh, 
I let me undo that. I can, I guess, control. Justin put a great, Justin suggested linking the blog post at the bottom under resources. Um, yeah. And I think that's a good idea as well. So maybe the th one thing that would be helpful for me just to think about is, um, they're getting a temperature check if folks think we could try to, is this something we'd want to try to close out by the end of the year um, to put into a proposal metric? Do we want to take a couple more? Do we want to wait until after the holidays period for December before pitching it? I'm just wondering what folks feel like if, it, if we want to sit on it for a little bit more or if we want to take it to the final review status maybe next week or something. My view is it's, if we accept the changes and that we've made and the discussion that we've had, I don't, I, I think broader review by the community, I think it's time for that. I don't think there's anything in here that's like unfinished or ill-considered. Um, and I, this is my opinion, but I'll let others state theirs. <clears throat> I would say we go through and try to resolve them. I think the later we get to get this out, I'd say. Hey, Amy, you broke up there. Um, can you say that again? Oh yeah, sorry, I finally went mobile. Um, I think we have a lot of comments in the doc that we need to resolve. I mean, I think they were mainly wording type things, mm -hmm. but if we don't get that resolved by next week and then finalize things in the for the following week, we're gonna lose people to the holidays. Right. So is that, are you advocating that we need to do a more review of the comments first and then see if we can release it after next week's meeting for review um so resolve everything and go through it for next week's meeting and then if there's any other comments next week that gives us another safe week but if we get everything and everyone's happy next week i think we're good okay so we'll, so we'll keep this on the agenda next hopefully. week and hopefully release it yes if all goes well all yep right. Sounds good to me. Okay, I'm just gonna make that note. Um, document discoverability is the other one, and we have uh, seven minutes left. Do we wanna do some work on document discoverability while we have time, or do we want to? What do we want to do? Maybe we can talk about this a little bit. Burnout, if it was there. I just don't know if there was anything else with burnout or if this is the only thing left. If this is the only thing left, I'm happy to just edit this for a little bit, but I just want to make sure we don't, uh, I don't know if there's anything else to add on the other metrics. Um, well, this was, I think this is, this metric we discussed last time, and I think you did a good job of explaining how this metric it emerged as sort of a diversion of two metrics or even three. And it's the third of it's the third of the three metrics. Am I recalling that correctly, Gior? Yes, it's the third of three. And so there was um, I think there's a lot of editing work to do, if I'm remembering. I don't know how much we finished last week to make this uniquely discovery and remove the parts of it that are are part of the other metric, uh, the other two metrics. I, that's my recollection of where this is at. Um, so, Georg, what are your? Th we we did do some crossing out. Um, so why don't I we? Was, uh, working on the blog post to preserve our work on the list of chat 
platforms. I just yeah. in the chat. If you can look at it if you don't mind going yeah. down that role hole because yeah. in five minutes I don't think we have time to dive into this new metric. Yeah, I think let's um, let's save this for next time. Just um, I'll make a, make a yeah. And Sean, were you saying that um, the idea was that we move what's here into other other metrics? Just so I'm under, am I understanding sure. that correctly? So, so what's happened is there were two other metrics that have already been created, and I I think at least one of them is released. Maybe both of them here. Yeah, one of them we released last time. There was the documentation accessibility. And we also worked on the documentation usability, I think, mm -hmm. which we have under review right now. And discoverability is the third. So the problem we ran into when we had just documentation was that we had many different things going on and it became this gigantic document. And you still see this in this version of the document because there are things that are not directly related to discoverability, but more about accessibility and usability, um, which we would have to look at the metrics we already have under review and published and pull these things out from this document. So there, yeah, there's, there's, um... That's the, that's the work, I think. And and um, I think let's set aside some time to do that work in the next meeting. OK. Did that answer your question, Nicole? Yes. Thank you. All right. I figure Garrett's really good at answering those kinds of questions. <laughs> so. Well, thank you. Um, we have we have uh, three three minutes left, and I think nothing that we can actually productively accomplish in those three minutes. So I might suggest this is a good time to say thank you and uh, we'll, we'll see you all next year or whatever. Can I uh, suggest that you all take a look at the blog post that I just oh. put in the chat? Wow. I think um, I think the left emoji is intent. Well, yes, but I suppose it, what I'd suggest is we make the left emoji an indication of open sourcedness, and that maybe we avoid likely controversy associated with poop emojis. Um, <laughs> That's valid. <laughs> Although I, I like the conversation we had, and if just I do too, and, I do too. I mean, it's yeah, I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not, yeah. So if I'll just can add the legend and explain it well, then I'm mm -hmm. fine leaving it because it does have a fun element to it. I I agree. So, and I think it's uh, the. Uh, one was open source and one was API or something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I, um, I, I like that. Is that is that work that you can do in the completion of the post, Georg, or do you need some assistance with that? I don't remember. Everything that I remember from this conversation is in the blog posts already. So if you have additional information, I do need help. Please add it. So yeah. for me, so I'm already going to take an action item to review the metric um, and the edits by the next meeting. I can just roll this one in because I think I'll just probably add two or three paragraphs. It won't. It won't be that much more. And, um, and what, like your, what again were the two categories that you mentioned um, for the two different emojis? So for that one, I had just done the the green check marks and the red X's were whether Percival supports those platforms. 
Then the, the heart was supposed to be whether it's an open slash stable API. The poop emoji was whether it was a closed or frequently changing API. And the thinking face was it's either it's complicated or we don't know. If I may suggest then remove the Percival indication. And Since we're doing only have imagery. one emoji. Yeah. And I think I think that there is um, this this I guess if we leave full open um, partial, I guess that's quite descriptive. Um, so what was your suggestion, Georg, to get rid of the second emoji or to or to get rid of the first one for Percival support? Yes, that is my suggestion. Just um, make it simpler and only have one piece of information in here. And because we had two questions at the top about is it open source, um, does it provide a stable API? And first of all, it was not in that question. So either we add that as one of the questions, but to me, that is not something that you as Augur developer would be interested in. I think it's something the community would be interested in though. And I think keeping okay. Percival support is is helpful be, because people know then they have a tool they can use to gather the data from that platform. And I think that will, that would influence me uh, about what platform I chose. So, you know, knowing that Percival doesn't currently support Zulip and this is, you know, blog posts can be updated. Um, and when Augur supports things like this, it could be updated with that information as well. But I, I do think it's helpful to, to have that indicated. Okay. Um, so unless anybody feels super strongly that it shouldn't be included, I, as the Augur person, I'm saying, I think the personal support is relevant and helpful. So let's leave it in there. Okay, thank you. And uh, now we're a minute and a half over. And so, um, Georg, I trust you to complete this blog post. It looks really good. Thank you very much for pulling it together during the meeting. That's amazing. And um, we will see everyone next week when Matt is our noble coordinator. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day.